YouTube Middle Complex here, and today we're going to be taking a look at some new arrivals at Blade HQ. This is something that I do weekly, multiple times a week in my own free time. I've got many retailers that I do this with, um, but uh, because it's something that I do anyway, I figure I might as well record it and we can go through some of this organically together. As usual, you don't have to do this. I will provide a link down at the very top of the description that will link exactly to the page that I am looking at so that you don't have to watch a video with me commentating on everything. You can just do it for yourself. That's perfectly fine. Um, I will highlight a few things and I will uh, link those things individually down in the description. I'm a Blade HQ affiliate. What does that mean? I am not employed by Blade HQ. They are not paying me to do this video. Um, but uh, if you use the links uh, for any of these products down in the description, in my description, it does benefit my channel and I would appreciate that. But that is of course your choice. You don't have to. Uh, the rest of this is really just going to be for entertainment. Thank you so much to my generous patrons who are supporting me right now. If you'd like to check out my Patreon, there's of course a link down in the description. Your support would mean the world to me. And uh, also follow me on Instagram at metal underscore complex. All right, let's get started here. Eh, some new best deck stuff. I, so just so you guys know, I scrolled through the to the bottom of this page and that was it. And I thought, yeah, let's do a video because there's always new cool stuff. Uh, and I like using uh, Blade HQ's new arrival section. Uh, the Best Tech Knives Webra. Kind of interesting. Best Tech makes good knives, if anybody doesn't know. Uh, okay, yeah. The Protech Malibu Custom <laughs> Reverse Tanto. Uh, it looks like in, um, I'm going to guess, is that Chad Nichols? Dem I don't know if it's Chad Nichols. It's Damascus. Uh, look, this is super expensive, but the Malibu is ridiculously popular. I think everybody knows that by now. If you didn't know, uh, Protec does do uh, some customs, which are very, very flashy variants of their production knives, and they almost always come in interesting materials. In this case, it looks like probably a titanium frame. Yeah, blue tie, and then there's some inlays, and then we have a Damascus blade and probably a pearl inlay on that button. Give you guys a look at the other side. Very beautiful milled pocket clip that's different than the original. That's nice. Very cool. Okay. Yeah, I figured that would be something that you guys might be interested in. Let's proceed. Um, check out this TR3 with a compound grind. Oh my goodness. That is so cool. Thank you for doing that. The first time that I saw uh, Protec do this was on the SNG, which we're, we're going to look at next. It's very similar to what Strider calls a nightmare grind. It's a compound. You have a hollow ground or thinner ground... Uh, primary you know or up front right after the sharpening show and then you have a thicker flat ground blade or grind that leads out to the tip tr3 excellent model um these are expensive this is uh, a mirror dlc so this is not they're not just charging you 419 bucks for the special grind uh it looks very similar to their operator series it's all black but we have we've got a special polishing uh, on the blade and some other interesting elements. So yeah, it's expensive, but it's super cool. I wanted to highlight that one. Let's go ahead and take a look at, here it is, right here. So we have a uh, Strider Protec SNG with the compound grind. You can't really see it perfectly. Can we see it there better? Not really. It does have a compound grind. I'm trying to look for an angle. Um, but we've got micarta, and then this is a three and a half inch mirror polished blade. So again, this is an upgraded Protec 154 CM. You shouldn't be judging these uh, knives entirely on the steel. And in any case, 154 CM is an excellent steel. Wouldn't bother me. Uh, but yeah, these are upgraded. I've got one of these uh, higher end Protex in titanium. It's actually a, a Strider SNG, a Protex Strider SNG with a pearl inlay button and a titanium handle in 154 CM and in my opinion, it's worth the <laughs> money. It depends on where you put your value, but I love these. I think they're cool. I think that pro I, I just love ProTech. They're excellent people to deal with. They make excellent knives. They make the best side opening automatics in the world, in my opinion. It's just my opinion. Uh, but yeah. Uh, there is a uh, Truid on there. Not a combat, but the smaller Truid on there in the Jade G10. That's probably something that somebody might be interested in. Let's move on to the next page. I'm going to go until it starts to feel dull. Now that I'm into flashlights, these things definitely catch my eye. Olight Seeker 2 Pro in mint green. 
It's rechargeable to 149 bucks. I'm a noob when it comes to flashlights, so I don't know anything about that, but it certainly is interesting. There's another, the uh, Olight SR2 Baton 2 is definitely a name that I've heard thrown around a lot. I think these are really popular with flashlight enthusiasts. Um, 1150 lumens and it's purple. So slicey dicey, there is your uh, flashlight, my friend. Um, we have some Balasong, small subends at 31 in ladder Damascus, that's interesting. Um, I know you guys probably want me to click on every last little thing, but I'm just clicking on things that are kind of interesting. The Kershaw launch, tw launch 12, uh, Cali Legal, uh, Cali Legal Stiletto is what happened in my brain there. Um, those are kind of neat. Uh, it's kind of a cheap looking carbon fiber inlay, but you know, hey, Cali Legal Autos, I think that's great. You know, people in Cali want to carry autos too. So there you go. Kaiser Genie. Nice, straightforward looking frame lock knife in carbon fiber. Kaiser always does a good job and their pricing is very competitive. You can see there it's a $158 knife. So that's something that's pretty cool. Uh, moving on here, always like a straightforward. Whenever I look at like fixed blades, the simpler, the better. Um, this is a four inch blade. It looks like it'll probably, this would probably be right up my alley. Now, Lion Steel has been hit or miss with me, but I mean, as far as their fit and finish goes and their grinds, you know, like a fixed blade is probably easier to create than a folding knife. In fact, it's inevitably easier to create for the most part, um, at least from my perspective or my idea of that, I guess. But it looks like they've got some uh, micro milling on the G10 here. This looks nice, you know, 532 bucks. I'm sure it's made really well. Um, I'm actually curious to find out what steel that is real quick. Let's find out. Sleipner, Sleipner, however you want to say that seems to be a steel that is kind of specific to lion steel, I think. Interesting. Uh, the Goblin's always been kind of a weird looking but interesting looking knife to me. It looks like uh, very organic ergonomic lines. Um, the Bestec Kendo, that's one of the better looking Bestecs that I've seen here lately. 8.375 inches overall. S35VN steel and nice. Okay. Yeah, that's a good looking knife for sure. I like the unobtrusive flipper tab. Um, it's kind of a, eh, let's call that a Japanese style Tanto blade, I guess. I don't know. Call it what you want. I like the flame titanium. That's pretty cool. They want 192 bucks for it. I think that's probably considering best X quality and what you're getting there. I think that's a pretty fair price. Just first impressions and looking at an image. Uh, the Predator, that's a little aggressive for me, but some people might like that more. Those Finch 1929 models, those have always been really cool or cool looking anyway. I'd pick it up in Jade because that's my thing right now. Uh, let's see here. The Elementum in, this is the S35VN Elementum. Hopefully these guys are still available by the time you see this video. You can pick these up in my Micarta right now. This is probably one of the best bang for your buck folding knives that exists. $81 for a Civivi in uh, like uh, in what I consider to be one of their flagship models now. The Elementum is, is an excellent, Elementum is an excellent knife and S35VN, yeah, it's no brainer. If you're looking for a nice sub $100 knife in premium materials, that's definitely the way to go. The new Guardian Tactical GTX 025 or GTX 25. Uh, yeah, that's one that I just um, uh, talked about here right when it came out. Quality is excellent if you like. Uh, small OTS, but you're looking for something that's American made and has competitive pricing with Microtech. Uh, yeah, <laughs> 100%. That's a great knife. Um, the Kaiser Clutch, that's something I pointed out in another episode I thought was kind of interesting that was coming soon. So check that one out. The Bestec Bobcat liner lock. Is that a new budget knife from Bestec? Yes, it is. Let's take a look at that real quick. All right. So this is another straightforward G10 and steel liner lock. Um, with a D2 steel blade, but it looks like we've got contour G10 scales. Not quite a forced, what are we looking at here? Seven and a half inches overall. You might be a little bit cramped in here. Um, 3.125 inches on the blade that is nearly fully flat ground. 130 thousandths on the spine. D2, yeah, I mean, you know, one of my favorite budget knives of all time is the Bestec Lion, and this is a little smaller. That's a nice looking clip there. Got that swoop. Uh, it looks like the screws are it looks like they're not recessed, but in any case, I mean, yeah, it's probably a solid $50 knife. That's something that, you know, just organically catches my eye. We are into the section here, long into uh, areas of uh, Blade HQ's new knives category that I am not, I have not seen yet. So anything I click on is truthfully just something that catches my eye. That is crazy. <laughs> <laughs> the best deck Casta. That's definitely a much more premium best deck. If you like that aggressive looking stuff, that might be your cup of tea. More tactile turn. Uh, that's a side click. And then there's the 
bolt action, a whole bunch of these. These are nice pens. I've only ever handled one, thanks to my buddy Seth. It's a nice pen. If I was going to pick up a pen, that might be something I'd go for. What the heck? The Squiddy Bee? Squid Industries Squiddy Bee Butterfly Balisong. <laughs> That's funny to say. All right, it's a Balisong trainer. About 10 inches overall. Blade material is... I don't know what that word is. Acetyl? Acetyl? Interesting. Okay. Well, here's what it looks like closed. Here's the other side closed. And here it is open with the bottle cap. And here it is next to... It's a, Oh, is it plastic? All right. Well, if you want a butterfly trainer, $54, I'll get you that one. Um, let's see here. Jiraz Custom Flare. It's an, quite expensive. I'm not very familiar with that maker there. Uh, so VV Elementum in Damascus and Carbon Fiber is back. That was gone for a little bit, so make sure you check that out. Let's move on to the next page. Um, let's see here. Look at this red Paragon Warlock. Holy moly. Paragon Warlock is definitely well made. It is a little bit clunky and awkward to manipulate. I know some people are really into this really flashy looking stuff. I mean, it, it's, it's not, I mean, I guess in some ways you could call the aesthetics of a knife a gimmick or the deployment me mechanism, but there is a huge difference between a knife like this that looks kind of like a gas station knife and a knife that actually is a gas station knife. This is a much more higher, uh, much higher quality knife than anything, you know, that would, is, is indicated by the, the category that I put it in. It's S30V. These are well made. It just, they were just too clunky for me and I couldn't quite figure out the action. A whole bunch of kitchen knives. I don't know if that is suddenly becoming a thing or if I just have never been paying attention to it, but okay. Um, Practic in carbon fiber, marbled carbon fiber. $169. I heard good things about the Practic. I don't think I've ever handled it. Um, we've got copper variants and brass variants in sort of a stone wash, kind of it's like pre-aged. The patina is already there. So yeah, I'm sure somebody would be interested in something like that. Let's move on here. Hinder investigator pens. Many times I have been tempted to pick up either an aluminum for 80 bucks or a titanium for 200. But I'll tell you, if I ever do pick one of these up, it will probably be in stainless steel or aluminum because $200 for a titanium pen is a lot of money. But if that's your cup of tea, then go for it. All right. Custom combat Trudon with a recurve two-tone blade. That is very expensive, but those are handmade knives. Marfion Halo. Let's look at this. <laughs> oh my gosh. Halo 6 Tanto mirror finished with looks like a carbon fiber inlay on the uh, on the blade. And then do we have I bet yeah, it's a stainless steel body. Wow. $3,215. Well, oh look at that. There's an inlay on the um the uh, whatever you call these locks where you pull it all the way out. Yeah, here's a picture of how that works. It pulls out and that's how you that's how you load them. I have never handled a Halo 6. If you have a Halo 6 and you wouldn't mind letting me review it, I would definitely like to experience the only uh, experience it. The only um, single action OTF that I have ever handled that was of any quality uh, was the ProTech Dark Angel. And that that is uh, that was quite interesting. I, I uh, very much enjoyed that. And it was very well made. These are dangerous and they are definitely not legal everywhere. And they definitely fire harder than regular double action OTFs or modern double action OTFs. So if you're going to order that, make sure that it is legal in your area. And that you understand that that can very much hurt you. As is the case with many, pretty much all knives. Um, Bowler M390 on the blade steel. Uh, I'm sure that'll make its owner very happy when it inevitably gets purchased. Either through my video or more likely just through somebody scanning through the website looking for something like that. Uh, some new Medfords. We have some stuff from Real Steel. Interesting. Frame lock and stainless steel. It's kind of a good looking knife. D2 and stainless steel frame lock. I like that, those oversized uh, fasteners there. Absolutely. Alone Knives Rumson liner lock. Hmm. Okay. Never heard of that brand. Interesting. Um, wow. Cold steel large pairing dagger. If you uh, if you find yourself in a you know daily situation where you need to parry, um, there you go. Let's see more Benchmade 9400 autos. I was very impressed with this. These are expensive, fairly competitive with Protec prices. S30V and aluminum. It's expensive, but that's a good knife. Benchmade did a good job with that. Honestly, I was I was very impressed with it. All right, moving on here to page 
12. I mean, obviously, you know, we're going through new releases uh, or stuff that is new, new arrivals in order. So some of this stuff has been around for a little bit, but I just, I like doing these videos. I like to just sort of look and comment and talk, especially when I go through a whole page of something that is not overly interesting to me and I'm able to just add filler, <laughs> more custom combat druid. God, that thing is pretty. Um, all right. This is a, uh, intrigued me a little bit. The Benchmade Oser Tengu? I don't know how to pronounce that. Um, that's small. Benchmade, come on with the price. I mean, it's cool, but it's it's expensive. The Artisan Cutlery Centauri. In, um, so this is a knife that when I unbox it, people are like, it's not available. It is available right now. Um, this is a uh, front flipper by Ray Laconico and Artisan Cutlery. Um, you've got a titanium frame lock and then a solid piece of carbon fiber on the other side. This is lightweight and, oh, oh, now wait a second. No, this is the little guy. 6.75, this is not the big one. This is actually, this actually I think would be a preferable size for most people because the original was huge. Um, 6.75 inches overall, blade length is three inches. Damascus, uh, yeah, this is cool. I think their Damascus is VG10 based, but I don't know that for sure, which is fine. You're not necessarily buying it for performance in that case. You're buying it for the aesthetics of Damascus, which I will say Artisan Cutlery does a very good job of. So if you're interested in that, based on you know my impressions of handling the larger one, I'd say you're good to go. Uh, there's a new recoil lock on the Artisan Cutlery Crag. I have that. It's interesting. I've got a video coming up. It functions very similar to the Axis lock, except that it is more of a switch has uh, a few additional means of interaction. And by additional, I mean one, your index finger, uh, like pulling down on it. And what are we looking at here? A um, couple other, some Guardian Tactical, or I'm sorry, some uh, Bradford Guardian 4s. Let's see if I can get one more interesting thing here, maybe before I call it... Uh, Call it a day on this video. I'm just kind of looking for the very next thing that jumps out at me. Some hinderer hardware. You can occasionally find some interesting hinderer hardware on other retailers um, uh, like Blade HQ. Um, let's see here. One more thing. Let's see. Can we find one more thing that just jumps out at me and says click on me? Uh, the Spider Cocanus is available now for anybody who didn't know that. Uh, that is a very odd looking knife, but it is certainly something I think some people would find interesting. Let's stop right here on this beautiful Microtech Dirac Delta. Wow. This is the larger one, nine and a quarter inches overall. I will own a Microtech Dirac Delta. I can promise you, you will see this knife, not in a custom form. I'm not going to be able to afford a thousand dollar one, but I know that a lot of people, you know, it's one of those things where you look at it and you're like, I would never pay that much. Somebody will. <laughs> that knife and Blade HQ are not sitting there thinking, gosh, I hope somebody buys this. <laughs> somebody will buy it. Definitely. Um, these are, uh, you know, the, the full custom versions. Um, and this one has, this is the best OTF design that I've ever seen. You have the firing switch on the face and a reversible pocket clip. So this is an ambidextrous knife. Um, you literally can, actually, I don't even think you need to reverse a pocket clip. Just thinking about it, if it's closed, right? If you're right-handed, you just put it as is in your right-handed pocket. And if you're left-handed, you just flip the whole thing over without taking the pocket clip off or anything. And it just goes right into your left-handed pocket. And you can actuate the switch, which is on the face of the uh, frame um, with your left hand. So yeah, this is an ambidextrous knife for sure. Uh, the firing switch being on the face, I think is a little more organic and this whole thing being symmetrical is just, just wonderful. I, I really like this design and, um, the standard ones, uh, the Delta comes in at like 250, 265. The direct Delta is like 350. Yeah. Yeah. For a combat Truidon sized OTF, that's a little slimmer, a little lighter but it has the firing switch in the right place, in my opinion. Yeah, I'll pay 350 bucks for a standard one of those. Just waiting for them to become a little more plentiful so I can see all of the options. Guys, I think that's about where we're gonna stop today. I will link everything that I highlighted that I thought, I'll go back through and watch this and check out the things I thought were really interesting and I will link those specifically. But like I said, right at the top will be a link where you can just go check out Blade HQ's new arrivals. If you saw something that you were interested in that I did not click on, then you can use that to go back through and find it yourself. 
I hope you guys enjoy this. I really like doing these. Um, they're, they're fun for me to discover new things. And, uh, you know, it's, it's, uh, you know, most of you guys have been really happy with, uh, content like this, um, and have, you know, said good things. So, um, you know, I realize in some cases it's faster for people to just look, um, but for whatever reason, you guys seem to enjoy my commentary. So that's, I, I appreciate that. But, uh, you know, if you watch this, if this is your first experience with my channel, just know that 99% of my content is hands on. I review a ton of knives uh, physically. Uh, I upload daily contents. There are at least five full knife reviews a week. And, and then I include some other things like unboxings, discussion topics, uh, videos like this, um, top 10 stuff, and then my Knife Guy series on Sundays. So if you enjoyed this in any way, shape, or form, whether you are brand new to my channel or somebody who's been around forever, please leave a like. If you'd like to check out my other content, I do, of course, have lots of videos of knives that are either expensive or inexpensive that I do or don't like. So check those out. And if you enjoy all my content, go ahead and click on that Metal Complex logo right there and subscribe because there's definitely more coming. Thanks again for watching, everybody, and have a great day.